This module is on the principles of antibacterial pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. The goal of antimicrobial therapy is the effective, efficient, and safe treatment of patients suffering from infections. This involves careful consideration of three elements, the bug, the drug, and the host. Also of importance is the consideration that the fact that the effect of antibiotics administration extend beyond the individual patient and the target pathogen, and that antibiotics affect the general bacterial ecology of the patient and the patient's environment. It must be recognized that there are 10 times as many bacterial cells as there are human cells in and on the patient, and that this entire varied and massive bacterial burden is exposed to the administered antibiotic, not just the target pathogen. An important consideration is that different antimicrobial classes affect organisms differently, which is why dose optimization of antimicrobials is an essential component of antimicrobial stewardship. The clinician must take into account host and pathogen factors in choosing an appropriate antibiotic, its dose, its route, and duration of administration. Critical to this decision-making process is a firm understanding of antibiotic pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, also known as PKPD. The pharmacokinetics of an antibiotic describes its disposition within the body, including its absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination, whereas antibiotic pharmacodynamics examines the relationship between the measured drug concentration in the serum, tissue, and body fluid and its antimicrobial effect on the target organism. Simply put, pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug, and pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body, or in our case, what the antibiotic does to the target organism. Knowledge of these two characteristics is important for the selection of breakpoints for interpretation of an in vitro susceptibility testing results, as well as optimal antibiotic selection together with the most effective dosing regimen. The pharmacokinetics describes the relationship between an antibiotic dosage regimen and concentration in serum and at the site of infection. Pharmacokinetics, however, does not correlate the concentration of antibiotic at the site with the antibiotic's effect. Pharmacodynamics, on the other hand, describes the relationship between antibiotic concentration at the site of infection and its biologic effect on the organism. The effect could be bacterial killing or inhibition of growth. Most drugs are reversibly bound to serum proteins, such as albumin and alpha-acid glycoproteins. The extent of protein binding varies considerably between different drugs. For example, only 10 to 30 percent of total serum concentration of gentamicin is bound to serum protein compared to 90 to 95 percent of ertapenem. Serum protein binding is an important consideration because 1. Only unbound drug is thought to exert an antimicrobial effect. 2. Only unbound drug diffuses into extravascular sites. and 3. Protein binding may slow the rate of drug elimination, increasing the half-life and thus allowing a longer dosing interval. The delineation of pharmacodynamic properties of an antibiotic requires knowledge of multiple factors. The most commonly used pharmacodynamic measure of in vitro antimicrobial activity against pathogens is the minimum inhibitory concentration, also known as MIC, and also the minimum bactericidal concentration, also known as MBC. The MIC describes the lowest concentration of antibiotic capable of inhibiting the visible growth of an organism in vitro, while MBC is the lowest concentration of an antibiotic to achieve 99.9% .9 bacterial kill. Although MIC and MBC are excellent predictors of potency of an antibiotic against an infecting organism, it suffers from the static nature of the method used for its determination. MICs and MBCs do not take into account the time course of antimicrobial activity nor does it mimic physiologic conditions, such as the intermittent administration of an antibiotic to a patient, which results in the target pathogen being subjected to a constantly changing concentration of the drug. Also of importance are effects of the antibiotic concentration below the MIC. This is also known as the sub-MIC effect, as well as the post-antibiotic effect, which is the persistent inhibition of bacterial replication after removal of the antibiotic from the system. This potential deficit can be overcome by the use of in vitro or in vivo pharmacodynamic models. In vitro pharmacodynamic modeling systems allow continuous adjustment of antibiotic concentration over time in order to mimic human pharmacokinetics. This approach allows the determination of antibiotic exposure thresholds associated with optimal bacterial inhibition or killing. 
These may also be determined using animal models of infections, such as rodent thigh models, with endpoints that include measurements of colony-forming units at the site of infection. The most direct and clinically relevant determination of optimal pharmacodynamics is derived from the study of infected patients, linking antibiotic exposure to microbiologic and clinical outcomes. Such data is unfortunately seldom available. The knowledge of a pathogen's MIC against a certain antibiotic, the antibiotic's pharmacokinetics, and the clinical status of the patient, as well as data on intersubject variability, is necessary to prevent treatment failures. The consideration of all of these factors and the probability of obtaining a successful therapeutic outcome based on drug pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics can be estimated using Monte Carlo simulations. Monte Carlo simulations use advanced mathematical modeling to apply the principles of antimicrobial PKPD to clinical practice. If a group of patients are given an antibiotic, it is expected that there will be a variability in drug concentration time profiles between patients the peak drug concentrations, and the time for drug clearance will vary among individuals. Monte Carlo simulations incorporates the variability in pharmacokinetics among a sample population when predicting antibiotic exposure and then calculates the probability of, of, for obtaining a target exposure for a range of MICs that an organism can have to a particular antibiotic regimen. An example would be determining the probability of achieving free drug concentration over 50% of the dosing interval for piperacillin tazobactam against Pseudomonas aeruginosa with an MIC of 8. By using MIC as a measure of potency of drug-organism interactions, the pharmacokinetic parameters determining efficacy can be converted into PKPD indexes. The three most common PKPD indices used to predict drug response are 1. Ratio of maximum free drug concentration to MIC, 2. Ratio of free area under the concentration time curve to MIC, and 3. The duration of time where free drug concentration remains above the MIC. In general, antimicrobials are categorized into two major patterns of antimicrobial activity, concentration-dependent and time-dependent bactericidal activity. For concentration-dependent antibiotics, the goal with this pattern of activity is to maximize the concentration and obtain the highest possible antimicrobial concentration at the site of infection because higher drug concentrations result in a greater rate and extent of microbial killing. The major pharmacodynamic perimeter that correlates with clinical and bacteriologic efficacy of these drugs is the peak drug concentration to MIC ratio. Antimicrobial classes that exhibit this pattern of antimicrobial activity include aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones, daptomycin, and metronidazole. Aminoglycosides are a class of antibiotics that display concentration-dependent killing. High peak aminoglycoside concentration to MIC ratios are correlated with clinical response. Parental aminoglycoside, particularly gentamicin, tobramycin, and amikacin, have long been used empirically for the treatment of febrile neutropenia or patients with life-threatening nosocomial infections. Aminoglycosides are commonly utilized with cell-active agents for synergistic activity for gram-positive infections. For the treatment of gram-negative infections, there are two methods of aminoglycoside dosing. The older of the two approach is to administer multiple doses using 1.7 to 2 mg per kg every 8 hours for gentamicin and tropomycin. The second method of dosing is referred to as once daily or extended interval dosing. It has also been recognized that autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity are potential complications of aminoglycoside therapy. Application of pharmacodynamic principles may be another method to reduce autotoxicity of aminoglycosides. Recent data have suggested that toxicity is related to drug accumulation within the ear and not peak concentrations. When considering the pharmacodynamic profile of aminoglycosides, there are distinct advantages to using high-dose extended interval. First, giving aminoglycosides as a single daily dose, as opposed to conventional strategies, provides the opportunity to maximize peak concentration to MIC ratios, resulting in bactericidal activity. Second, high-dose extended interval dosing minimizes drug accumulation within the inner ear and kidney and therefore minimizes the potential for toxicity. Also of consideration is the post-antibiotic effect, 
which allows for a longer period of bacterial suppression during the dosing interval. And finally, dosing immunoglycosides with high dose extended interval may prevent the development of bacterial resistance. The Hartford nomogram was one of the first methods of high dose extended interval proposed and implemented by Hartford Hospital in Connecticut. This method aims at optimizing peak to MIC ratio by administering a dose of 7 mg per kg of either gentamicin or tobramycin. Based on renal function, the dose requires modification in order to minimize drug accumulation. Due to the high peak concentrations obtained and the drug-free period at the end of each dosing interval, this nomogram eliminated the need to draw standard peaks and trough samples. Rather, a random single blood sample is obtained between 6 to 14 hours after the administration of an aminoglycoside. The serum concentration obtained is then plotted on the nomogram to determine the appropriate dosing interval. Fluoroquinolones are another class of antibiotics that display concentration-dependent activity. The PKPD measure for fluoroquinolone is the 24-hour area under the curve to MIC ratio. An AUC to MIC ratio of greater than 125 correlates with optimal clinical and microbiologic outcomes in seriously ill patients infected with gram-negative enteric pathogens, as well as pseudomonas. The fluoroquinolone goal AUC to MIC ratio varies depending on the target organism. For respiratory tract infections involving strep pneumonia, the free drug 24-hour AUC to MIC ratio associated with high probability of bacterial eradication is around 30, which is significantly lower than the goal AUC to MIC involving gram-negative microorganisms. The second pattern of killing is characterized by time-dependent killing, which refers to the time it takes for a pathogen to be killed by an exposure to an antimicrobial agent. The goal of time-dependent killing is to optimize the duration of exposure. This pattern is observed with beta-lactam antibiotics. Macrolides, clindamycin, glycopeptides. The target pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic index, which estimates clinical success, is the time during which concentration remains above the MIC. Within each class of beta-lactam antibiotics, the optimal time over MIC varies for different bug drug combinations. Bacterial static effects are typically observed when the free drug concentration exceeds the MIC for 35 to 40% of the dosing interval for cephalosporins, 30% for penicillins, and 20% for carbapenems. To achieve maximal bacterial cytal effect, the drug concentration has to be above the MIC 60 to 70% of the dosing interval for cephalosporins, 50% for penicillins, and 40% for carbapenems. We can apply these principles to piperacillin tazobactam. Piperacillin tazobactam is a commonly used first-line agent, especially for nosocomial infections due to its wide spectrum of activity and safety profile. At the initiation of empiric therapy, the MICs of an organism are often not available and clinicians must rely on the patient's clinical history as well as the institution's local antibiogram to select an agent that will be active against the likely pathogen. In the setting of healthcare-associated infections, it is critical to select an agent and regimen that has a high probability of achieving the pharmacodynamic target for efficacy. Piperacillin tazobactam is part of the beta-lactam antibiotic class, and like other beta-lactam antibiotics, the major pharmacodynamic parameter most predictive of efficacy is time over MIC. For piperacillin tazobactam specifically, its activity is optimized when free drug concentration exceeds the MIC for 50% of the dosing interval. In order to maximize time over MIC, one could either administer a higher dose, increase the dosing frequency, or increase the duration of the infusion. It is also important to note that the CLSI breakpoints for Pseudomonas aeruginosa is less than 64 and 4 milligrams per liter. If the MIC of the pathogen is 32, the piperacillin tazobactam regimen of 3.375 grams IV every six hours has approximately 30% chance of attaining the target goal, which is free drug above the MIC for 50% of the dosing interval. In order to meet the pharmacodynamic target for maximizing time above MIC, one may consider increasing the dose to 4.5 
IV every six hours, which is the typical dose for treatment of Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections. However, the probability of target attainment is still only about 50%. When you prolong the infusion of 4.5 grams IV every six hours to be administered over four hours, the probability of target attainment is increased significantly, upwards of 90%. This method of prolonging or continuous infusion of time-dependent antibiotics allows for a higher probability of achieving the goal pharmacodynamic target compared to intermittent dosing and can be especially beneficial in critically ill populations and those infected with organisms that have a higher MIC. The third pattern of antimicrobial activity displays mixed properties and is characterized by time-dependent killing and a moderate persistent effect. The ideal dosing regimen for these antimicrobials include maximizing the amount of drug received. Therefore, the 24-hour AUC to MIC ratio is the parameter that correlates with efficacy. Antimicrobials that display this pattern of activity includes macrolides, clindamycin, tetracycline, linazolid, and vancomycin. To summarize the three major patterns of antimicrobial activity, the first pattern of antimicrobial activity is characterized by concentration-dependent killing and includes antibiotic classes such as aminoglycosides and fluoroquinolones. These antibiotics demonstrate concentration-dependent killing over a great range of concentrations and have a prolonged post-antibiotic effect. With such antibiotics, the appropriate strategy is the administration of large infrequent doses. Thus, the high peak drug concentration maximizes killing while at the same time the persistent post-antibiotic effects help to maintain the antimicrobial activity between doses. In contrast to the second pattern of antimicrobial activity, such as beta-lactam antibiotics that exhibit time-dependent activity as a result of saturable microbial killing with minimal persistence effect once exposure to the antibiotic has ended. In this circumstance, the goal is to optimize the duration of exposure of the pathogen to concentrations of antibiotic in excess of the MIC. And finally, the third pattern is also characterized by time-dependent killing, but the duration of persistent effect is moderately prolonged. Because anti-infectives vary significantly in their time course of antimicrobial activity, Understanding the exposure response relationship between bug drug combination is critical when designing an antibiotic dosing regimen. The role of antimicrobial stewardship is to consider the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic of each antimicrobial agent and promote the use of optimal dosing regimens in order to obtain maximal bacterial eradication as well as preventing the development of resistance on therapy.